first seminar session, we're going to go over the three main parts of leg locking, which is going to be entangling the leg, exposing the heel, and then breaking the leg. Okay, we're going to spend a lot of time on entangling the leg because that's that's like uh, that's the first step in the process, and then we're ultimately going to get to like actually breaking the leg. Okay, when we look to entangle somebody, okay, just so you guys understand what I mean when I say entanglement, so uh, just sit down here for me. So an entanglement is any time I have my legs wrapped around at least one of his legs. It could, could be both of his legs. This is an entanglement too. And his knee is within my knee line. Right, so see my knee line here, guys? Right, so if his knee is within my knee line, which means it's closer to my hips rather than like farther away from it, it's an entanglement. So an entanglement, we could, you can think of this as like a form of guard. Um, so like an ashigurami is an entanglement and a guard. De La Hiva is a guard, but not an entanglement, if that makes sense. You lose the entanglement when the knee starts coming out of your knee line. Okay, so I have my knee line here and the knee has come out of my knee line. This is obviously not what we want. So when we start to think about how do we entangle people, one of the first things I want you guys to think about is how do we get his knee within our knee line, okay? So to start off, we'll look at a Kani Basami, okay? So um, we're gonna be up against a guy who has one leg up. So we're gonna look at a very, very basic version and then we'll get more advanced. So against someone like this with one leg, one thing we can do is let me get a two-on-one grip, uh, two grip like so, pull myself in close, go for the arm drag, and he keeps his leg up because he doesn't want to get his back taken. As I go for the arm drag, I take this hand, I go behind the, the knee and I grab the calf, and I'm gonna extend my left leg out, and I get, uh, as I come through, my hand becomes an overwrap grip. Now my right foot goes to the far glute, I pull him forward, and I put my foot on his hip, and I get a standard ashigurami, okay? From this standard ashigurami, a very common reaction you're gonna get with, with people that are, this is not really a great reaction on his part, but inexperienced people will do this all the time. He'll try to come towards me and grab my head. Okay, I definitely don't recommend this, but you will see this pretty frequently. Okay, when he does that, we're gonna grab his head, and I'm gonna take my left foot, and I'm gonna put it on the mat. Now I'm just gonna bump him up, and now I take this leg and I come around. Mm -hmm. If you need to, you can take your left hand, reach through, so, sometimes you can't reach depending on the body type, but if you can, this is definitely gonna be helpful. You grab the knee, okay? Now you wrap up your legs. Now here, it's very easy to put him down because he, both of his legs are essentially connected, right? If he goes to separate his legs to sprawl, it's very, very difficult, okay? Uh, so you can, you can start with a triangle, but I ultimately recommend going to a foot to foot. Now here, uh, you can take him down in two ways. I can take him straight back. Sometimes that'll work. If not, he drives into me. Yeah, come on, drive into me. You can take him back the other way. And sometimes you'll have to go like back and forth between those two, right? You go one way, uh, that creates an off balance. It doesn't work, you're gonna take him the other way then. All right, so we start off, again, he's on one leg. We threaten, you could also, if he's on his knees, you could set this up by like, if he's on both of his knees, by chaining it to an arm drag, and you're going to get behind him. And one good way he can stop that is by picking his leg up. And as soon as you see that, you come through to this standard ashi. Okay, now if he's coming towards me, he grabs my head, you grab his head, and you put your foot flat on the mat. Now we're gonna bump him up, and we do our basic kind of just, I mean, think of this left leg, what you wanna do with it, it wants to come, you wanna come around, and then bring the knee back in, okay? A, a common mistake I see is people take this, this leg here, which is your frame leg, and they go deep with that. That's no good. Now, even if I get a triangle, even if I have both his legs, I'm gonna get crushed because I don't have a frame. So if you see here, this right leg is a frame. So when he goes to sprawl on me, it doesn't, it doesn't work, okay? So it's a combination of things. It's the frames and keeping his legs connected and the off balance in both directions. That's ultimately gonna take him down. Does that make sense, guys? Yes, any questions? No, all right, let's get started. One, two, three. Common, uh reaction you're going to see when you go for this that will stop the move and we're going to look at different strategies for dealing with it. So before we started I basically told Cody how to defend incorrectly uh, so it would be easy for you guys. Now we're going to see what, what should he actually be doing. So when I go to elevate him he, he has two options but let's let's assume right now his foot comes off the floor. His foot comes off the floor yeah and he brings his ankle into his butt okay this is one thing you're going to see. How can he do this but stop me from getting the cross ashi position. Well, it's actually very simple. When you elevate him, if he points his knee out, yeah, see how he points his knee out here? So don't, don't even fall down, just point the knee out. Yeah, if he keeps the knee pointed out like this, okay, so the knee is not pointing in, it's pointed out. Now when I scissor around the leg, you're below the knee. And remember guys, 
the main thing we're trying to do when we want to entangle people is we want to have our legs above the knee, right? So now this, it stops it, and honestly, this is very dangerous. Cody can go into, I don't know, barambolas. Yeah, he can go for barambolas, and it's that's obviously pretty bad. Okay, so how do we how do we deal with that when we see it? Okay, because uh, obviously, once you start getting to a higher level, people are going to do this more and more frequently. Okay, so the first thing you can do, it's very very simple. If you elevate somebody and you go to bump them forward and they do this, just go back to the standard action. Okay. Don't, don't try to persist. Don't try to persist with this. You're gonna run into dangerous situations. Okay, and even if you get to this point, I'd recommend just pushing them back and going back to the standard ashi and doing something different. We have a lot of other good options which we're gonna look at later on. But another way we can uh, deal with this is, let's think about how can we force the knee to be in the position that we want it. Now the move that we're gonna look at, it does have a counter and I'm gonna show you guys the counter, but I've used it a lot in competition and I, I pulled this off successfully. As long as you're aware of the counter, it's okay. Uh, so let's just take a look at it first. So, uh, both knees down. So this time instead, he's gonna have both his knees down. We're gonna grab his triceps, and we're gonna elevate him. But we're not gonna elevate him straight back. I'm gonna pull forward, and then I'm gonna fall towards one hip, okay? The, the hip that I pull towards, I'm gonna wrap up the leg on the opposite side. So turn this way. So I'm gonna go for this leg, okay? Now when I elevate, Look what happens with his knee. It points out, right? You can go through to the straight ashi like we just talked about, right? Whenever he opens up his knees, he's, he's presenting opportunities for straight ashi. But a way we can force the knee to be where we want it, so start over again, is when I elevate him, uh, it's hard to, hard to do this slow, guys, sorry. So when I elevate him, you grab the knee, okay? And you hold it. So. You can't, you can't do this easily if you don't do it from the beginning. So you're here, like if I try to, if I, try, if I elevate and then he does this, point the knee out, you're not gonna pull the knee back. It's, it's pretty unrealistic. At that point, at that point, just go through to a straight ashi. But if from the beginning you elevate him, so I elevate and I grab, in anticipation of him pointing it out, you can get this position, all right? Now, what do you guys think? The counter might be. My arm is right here. You can grab my femora. So grab my wrist if you're looking. Yeah, that's that's the counter. Okay. I had a match against a guy who's known for really good rolling femoras, and the first time I tried this, <laughs> he went for it, <laughs> and he very nearly got it. <laughs> uh, he, well, he got the femora, but I was able to spin out, and I was like, okay, I gotta. If you're gonna do this, you gotta do it really quick. Okay. This is not a move where you you hold and you're like, oh, let me set this up, right? Because if you do that, whenever I make a grip like this where my elbow comes away from my torso. See how far my elbow is from my torso? You start to present the risk of rolling kimuras, okay? So you gotta do this quick. So in that same match, the second time I went for it, I was able to get the position. I didn't hesitate. The first time I hesitated too much, I, I elevated, I grabbed, and I was kind of like finagling with his leg, and then he, he took the opportunity and went for the kimura, okay? So you gotta do this very, very quickly and, and with confidence, okay? So I'm gonna pull, try to grip, and at this point, you're fine. There's obviously there's no Kimura anymore. But so again, I'm here, I get my grips on this tricep. Again, we're not just going straight back. I'm going back and then to the side. And I grab behind the knee. Okay? Now if I'm holding the knee here, right, and he goes to point the knee out, it's gonna be hard. Now I go around and I lock up my position. Okay, now I start working to off balance him in either direction. Okay, does that make sense, guys? Yes, sir. Yes. Do you, do you want to see it? Yeah, please. Okay, so I'll use you. You hold it, and you grip behind the knee. So if you guys look at a lot of the Kanye Visamis I finish, a lot of the ones I finished in these last two IBJJF tournaments, this is what I'm doing, because I'm anticipating them pointing their knees out, right? So again, we're here, I grip, and we get our cross ashi position. 